for you, Hewitt. May I? I owe you $50. 25 to see you, 25 to raise. I believe. Not yet. A lot of your IOUs here. They're all perfectly good, I assure you. That's just fine, Hewitt. In that case, you won't mind paying off before you play any more poker. I hope to win them all back. Save a lot of tiresome trips to the bank, you know. You've been hoping to win for the past two days, but your luck just ain't been up to your expectations. House limit on losers is $500. Vouchers here total up to 650 you owe. Now you just pay up and you can play all you like after that. It's, it's most embarrassing, Jessup. I don't carry that amount of money around with me. In that case, you're in real trouble, Hewitt. I was about to say that I need some time to telegraph my bank for a letter of credit. Uh, just a day or so. You've got three hours. But really, Jessup, this... I, I can't arrange for the money so soon. Three hours. I'll try. you had in there. I was watching. Never saw a man lose with so many good hands. Oh, well, luck runs hot and cold. When it's cold, nothing seems to help. <laughs> but it always can change for the better, can it? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, it usually does. Uh -huh. I don't think we've met Mr... Uh... Jace Timmons. I own the freight line here in town. Uh, Edward Winfield Hewitt. Uh -huh. uh, Hewitt, if you don't mind my butting in, let me give you a little advice. Don't wait too long to pay Jessup. When it comes to money owed him, he's got less patience than a stuck bull. Best you pay up quick. But I have to wire San Francisco for the money. I don't know. That kind of thing is liable to take time. Maybe more than three hours. I can't understand why he's in such a hurry. Might be he doesn't think there is any money in San Francisco. You do have the money, don't you? You don't suppose I'd dream of sitting down to a game of cards unless I had adequate funds. What do you think I am? I didn't mean anything by it. But to keep your playing cash in San Francisco... Well, as long as you can pay off, it's all right, I guess. Uh, if there should be some little difficulty in obtaining the money... Oh, well... People who tangle with Jessup wind up dead. Tell you what, Hewitt. If you have any trouble at all getting the money, you come see me. I might have a job for you. It'd pay $800. What sort of job pays all that money? Special job. Unless you definitely wanted it, I couldn't give you the details. You understand, it's pretty important. But if you did take it, I could get Jessup to let you off the string. Guarantee him payment when you complete the job. Are you interested, Hewitt? Well, uh, I'm not sure. That, uh, that fellow who followed me out of the saloon. Uh -huh. John Clay, Jessup's hired enforcer. I wouldn't push that deadline too close, Hewitt. 
Clay has been known to kill a man and bring his gold fillings back to Jessup to pay off a debt. Well, if you want the job, you can find me at my office or at the saloon. Thanks. Denver a little while. What's all this? For the Indian school? Uh-huh. They've been under quarantine for weeks. No one wants to go near them. And they need food, medicine, just about everything. Uh, measles. A simple little thing like measles. Can make a lot of trouble. Everything is already, Mrs. Barkley. You sure you don't want me to go along with you? Silas, you have more than enough to do around here besides who would look after Mr. Jared. Yes, ma'am. Now, wait a minute. You're not going alone. I always have. Look, why don't you let me get a continuation on the Taylor case? I'll go with you. There's no need for that. Well, then take a ranch, Ann. With spring branding going on? Jared, I don't need a bodyguard. I don't want one. I'm only going to the Indian village. Yes, I know. I but... know that country like I know my own name. If I take a few shortcuts, I'll be there by tomorrow afternoon. I'll send you a telegram when I arrive. Well, all right, but be careful, will you? Oh, don't worry. I've had the measles. Is it? Desk clerk, Mr. Hewitt. I made up your bill, Mr. Hewitt. I have no intention of leaving at the moment. Begging your pardon, Mr. Hewitt, but word is out around town that you owe Troy Jessup. Maybe you can't get the money. This bill is for $22. If you just pay up... I'll pay when I leave and not before. Mr. Hewitt, I don't want to have to ask the undertaker for this $22 out of your... Last possession. Get out! on my way to the bank to see if the money had arrived. I didn't see a send a wire. It's conceivable you don't see everything. Maybe. You taking that money out in pennies? That is none of your business. But not yet. You got about an hour. Then I'll see you.
I'll take the job. Well, there it is. All you have to do is to get it up to the Miwok village by nightfall Wednesday. But if it's so simple, why is it a special job? You're a freighter, one of your own drivers could do it. That's right. If it wasn't illegal to sell liquor to the Indians, my freight line is a legal business. Seems a great deal of risk for a very little profit. Not if they let us come in and mine their lands. There are traces of silver up there. It's worth the risk for that kind of payment. Why do you ask me to drive for you? Because the only man who would take this kind of job is somebody who needs it. And you need it. Over $600 worth. That's true enough. Those poor Indians, they have so little to begin with. To turn this over to them for a few hours of alcoholic joy, to say nothing of a bad headache. Now look, you're in this now, Hewitt. I put Jessup off for four days. That'll give you time to get up there and make delivery and come back here. If you don't do it, you're dead. Now what do you want it to be? Terribly generous of you to offer me an alternative when you know there isn't one. As I said earlier, I'll, I'll do the job. Have you ever driven a four-up before? No, but I can handle it. All right. You leave in the morning. Uh, about the money. Your debt with Jessup will be paid when you deliver the cargo, and you'll get your money then, too. But I, I need some money now, my hotel bill. How much? Twelve dollars will do. if you would help me. I'm on my way to Stantonville and my wagon broke an axle. Are you going that far? Well, I'm going in that direction, yes. Well, I'm Victoria Barclay. Now, if I could just get there, I could hire another rig and send someone back for mine. So you're Mrs. Barclay of the Stockton Barclays? Yes, I am. Ah, well, I am going to Stantonville and I'd be happy to have your company. Oh, thank you. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to help me with all my boxes. Oh, by all means. Hey, new team. They, they just don't seem to want to stand still. Well, sometimes it takes a while for them to know what you want of them. Yes. Yes, I suppose so. Why, what's all this? Ah, oh, supplies for the Indian school. Well, I would have thought they'd got regular supplies from the outside. Oh, they do, when they're not under quarantine for measles. None of the freighters want to go up there. Measles? But that's not dangerous. Oh, not for you or for me. But the Indians have never had it before. It's reached almost an epidemic, and some people are frightened of it. Maybe you didn't know it when you stopped. But you'll be helping a lot of sick children. Your charge d'affaires some years ago at court. Gracious gentlemen and uh, connoisseur, he agreed with me that walking down the mall on a Sunday afternoon was one of life's greatest pleasures. My daughter felt the same way about it. She spent a lot of time in London when she went to Europe. Ah, that'd be young Audra, wouldn't it? Yes, how did you know? <laughs> Mrs. Barclay, I must confess to being a great admirer of your family. Your husband and yourself have built a position here out of nothing. It's something I want to do, have to do. I suppose I should have made my mark in this country years ago. But as the third son, I inherited no estate or title. But there was a considerable sum of money which I decided to invest in a cattle ranch in Wyoming. What happened? My present state is the result of that investment. 
I rather unwisely allowed agents to handle the arrangements whilst I lived the life of a gentleman rancher in London. After a while, I began to realize that the reports I was receiving were not only evasive and unsatisfactory, but also rather few. So, I decided to take the last of my inheritance and come to Wyoming to see the ranch. And they had never heard of you. Quite correct. The property existed only on paper. <laughs> I imagine those two agents are living rather well off somewhere now. And here I am driving a freight wagon. Oh, I'm sorry. But perhaps this will be a new beginning for you. <laughs> get up. Oh. Let's get moving. Uh, Mr. Hewitt, when was the last time you rested the horses? They seem rather tired. Well, I thought I'd make it to Simpson's Wells before I stopped. Do you mean to tell me you haven't rested them since you started? No, I have a schedule to meet. I suggest you pull over there right now. You're right, of course. Sandwiches here. Would you care to join me? Oh, I'd be delighted. I'll see to the team first. I suppose it's obvious to you that this is the first time I've ever done this kind of work. Only a small cut, you'll be all right. What's wrong, Mrs. Barclay? You told me you were hauling farm tools for the My Walk Village. Now, since when do farm tools come in whiskey bottles? Who gave you permission to go snooping around? I was looking for water for you. How can you do this? Do you know what that poison cost them in more than money? Now, just a minute, Mrs. Barclay. I'm not selling them that liquor. I'm just the driver. That's what I'm paid for. That makes you just as guilty and just as dirty. Well, man has to find some way of earning a living. A man has to have some honor, too. I think you'll find, Mrs. Barclay, that necessity often negates honor. And absolute necessity does away with ethics. Does a freight driver's pay mean that much to you? In this instance, yes. You object to what I'm doing, and I understand your point of view. But looking at it practically, you have no way to move your precious goods except with my illegal cargo. Necessity over honor, Mrs. Parkley. <laughs> Mr. Heath, it's good to see you back. Good to be back, Silas. Where's Mr. Nick? Didn't he come along with you? Oh, he had some business to take care of. Well, he sure's going to miss a good dinner tonight. Well, I'd say that serves him about right, huh? Here, I'll tend your horse for you. All right, Silas, thank you. Well, it's about time you got back. Where's Nick? Uh, he had some special business with the cattle buyer. What's so special about selling off a few yearlings? Well, it was a cattle buyer that interested Nick. Cattle buyer? Nick knows a lot of cattle buyers. Not one like T.A. Holcomb. T.A. Holcomb? What's so special about him? Well, in a few short words, tall, blonde, and beautiful. 
First lady cattle buyer I ever saw. T.A. Holcomb is a lady? Teresa Ann. Well, where's Nick now? Well, about as near as I can figure, halfway to Cheyenne. That's where she was heading. Where's Mother? Uh, the measles broke out over at the Indian school. It's almost epidemic. Dr. Cortina needed some supplies, so she took them over. Who went with her? Nobody. She went along. She say when she'd get there? Well, she should get there by tonight. She'll wire us when she arrives. Now, listen, you don't really think Nick would go to Cheyenne, do you? Jared, you haven't seen T.A. Hookham. <laughs> What are you going to do? About what? This. What do you expect me to do? As a lady of integrity and honor, I assume you'll march up to the local constabulary and turn me in. Good guess, good guess. Mrs. Barclay, won't you take into consideration the fact that I'm helping you accomplish your errand of mercy? And canceling it out with this cargo of whiskey. Can't you understand my position at all? No. You regard yourself as an angel of mercy, don't you? Helping the sick and the poor. And the righteous handmaiden of justice, too. Just turn me in and don't even try to understand that I'm only doing what I have to do. Reporting this to the marshal is what I have to do. I can't let you do that. Well, I was wondering when you were going to get around to that. Well, how are you going to do it? Shoot me? There's a good place for it over there. They wouldn't find my body for quite some time. That is, if you're brave enough to kill a woman. Mrs. Barclay, please, I had no such thought. But you must admit it'd be foolish of me to drop you at the door of the Stantonville jail so you can turn me in. No, you're getting off here. You'll be safe enough. And it's a long walk to Stantonville. I'll be long gone before you arrive. And your supplies are getting off here, too. Your horses I'll leave at the livery stable in town. Mrs. Barclay, I don't want to have to do this at gunpoint. Please get down. Say, Gambler, get off on time? Yep. He was all anxious to go. Didn't ask too many questions. <laughs> that man just hopped every which way we wanted him to. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a bad shark. Couldn't play poker worth a nickel. He sure had class. Mm. Too bad. He'll probably be dead by nightfall. I hope somebody buries him decent. little difficulty. What happened? I'm not sure. I tried to pick up a little speed, but the team got away from me. I tried to stop them, but uh, one of the horses stumbled and the wagon slewed around. The details are a bit hazy, but uh, this is the result. You, uh, you never run into that kind of trouble, do you? I'm willing to make a deal with you for some consideration in return. Such as? A ride to Stantonville for me and my supplies that you dropped off on the trail back there. On the same terms as before, 
Uh-huh. I'm afraid not, Mrs. Barclay. But I'll make you a counteroffer. I'll drop you close to Stantonville and you can walk in. That'll give me time to deliver the cargo. Deal? I'd make a deal with the devil himself if it will get those supplies to those children. You're on, Hewitt. It's all yours. See the wagon? Yep. Yeah. Down the same old road as always. Well, that old Timmons fella just never learns, do he? <laughs> you know, he's turning out to be our benefactor. <laughs> if I was a religious man, I'd offer up a prayer for his continued good health. <laughs> I tell you one thing, boy. That old driver he hired, you don't seem too smart neither. Boy, he acts like he'd never seen a team of horses before in his life. Shoot, he had him so fouled up there once, thought he was going to be there next Tuesday. <laughs> well, maybe you should have given him a hand. Might have saved some time. <laughs> well, I might have done just that. But, uh, this woman started helping him. You say there was a woman with him? That's right. Hooked her up on a trail. Her rig broke down. Real pretty woman, too. Anything that wears a skirt looks good to you. I think I got so close to her one time that I almost smelled a perfume. Which reminds me, Lloyd, when we're getting back to her town again. Just as soon as we take that shipment and sell it to the Paiutes across the line in Nevada. Well, now, how much money do you think we're going to make? More than enough to last for the next few months, anyway. <clears throat> hey, what you say we hit old Carson City again? Well, I like them old girls down there a lot. Sure you did. And what did they think of your big, ugly face? Now, Tajan, them girls treated me real nice. So you just better shut up. Any man with money in his pocket is a handsome man to them. That's right, Cajun. Nobody knows that any better than you do. under the seat if you're cold. I'm quite comfortable, thank you. Take that road straight ahead. It's a shortcut. Where does it lead to? Oh, don't worry. It doesn't go anywhere near civilization. It's just a little old ghost town. Thanks. I hope that didn't strain your ethics too much. Worry about your own ethics. That is, if you have any left. Oh, I think one or two survive. Childhood training, you know. God and country, mother, women and children first. Mm-hmm. Well, you can drop the last two. This liquor of yours will hurt even them. I've told you before, it is not my liquor. I'm only the driver. And that makes you as innocent as a typhoid carrier. Did you feed the horses? Yes. If you're hungry, you'll want something hot. Well, it would turn out better, of course, if all the ingredients were fresh, but uh, this should be all right. It took me some time to realize that good food west of the Mississippi is as rare as the dodo bird. So I always carry a few things of my own. Interesting hobby, actually. I uh, can't exactly call this gourmet cooking. 
More like survival stew, I like you it. But it'll taste all right. This is Barclay. Circumstances have put me in the position where I have to deliver that wagon. Now then, if you hadn't known what the cargo was, would you still hate me? The point is, I do know, and what you're doing is wrong. Whereas you've never done anything wrong, I suppose. Oh. Such as condemning me without knowing why I'm doing it. Such as not admitting that I'm helping you deliver your cargo. I'm not really a blackout, Mrs. Barclay. Look, we're both going in the same direction, and we need each other to get where we're going, and that is all we have in common. I consider that a great concession on your part. Well, don't. We may both have cargo on the same wagon, but mine is going to save lives. Yours will destroy them. You know, the difference between us is, whereas I know how to bend to necessity, you'd never even consider it. Ow! Are you all right? <laughs> is that an academic question, or do you really care? I don't like to see anybody hurt. Well, there's no major damage, just a little scorching. Here we are. I'm not hungry. You're a poor liar. You haven't had a thing to eat all day. I still have some sandwiches left. Which are now stale. Mrs. Barclay, would you please let me have my own way for once? Well, I'll say one thing, Mr. Hewitt. If you would confine your activities to cooking, you'd be a lot better off in this world. knew about that shipment? I don't know. Obviously, those thieves did. Well, what do we do now? There are two loose horses out there. You're not going out by yourself, Holland. Do you think you could help me catch them? I'll try. Let's go. No, those weren't made by my horses. Those were made when the ground was wet. Some riders must have passed through here about a week ago. Now, see, those over there. Now, they're fresh, and they come in from the right direction. How did you learn to track? Oh, you learn a lot of things out here when you have to. Come on. I'm going to approach them from this side. Do you think you could go around in back of them and be ready to turn them back if they run away from me? Oh, I think so. Uh-huh. Easy, boy. Easy, Sandy. Oh, boy. Mr. Hewitt, is there anything else you don't know how to do? I don't know. I, I seem to keep on discovering new ones. I think perhaps i better stay rooted to this spot. Oh, please. Please do. Easy, Sandy. All right, boy. Boy. Whoa, whoa, boy, whoa, 
boy. Oh, oh, oh. Easy boy. Easy boy. Easy boy. saddles? Found them in the livery stable. And where do you think you're going? I am going after my cargo and you are going home. You mean it's still that important to you? My life's important to me, such as it is. Now, I'm not very good at things, Mrs. Barclay. Among my other faults, I don't play poker very well. I wound up owing far too much money to the wrong sort of people. Frankly, unless I deliver that cargo of liquor, the specified point tomorrow, They'll hunt me down and shoot me. Well, if you run now, how could they find you? Maybe they won't, but I'm not taking any chances with my life. I'm going to get that cargo back. And you're not coming with me. Mr. Hewitt, I am absolutely convinced you can't do this alone. Now, what stops your wagon stops my supplies from getting to those children. But you can get other supplies in Stantonville. Not the medicine. I'm going with you. Is that it? No. This is from Sacramento. Well, you sent our wire out over an hour ago. It should be in. Now, Jared, you know as well as I do, it's more than five miles from Stantonville out to the Indian school. Somebody had to ride out there with it and then ride back in with your answer, and that takes time. Well, somebody in Stantonville might have seen a drive in. Yeah, but your wire wasn't addressed to somebody in Stantonville. Wait a minute. Here it comes now. Well, what's it saying? Yeah. She never arrived at the school. Dr. Cortina checked Stantonville. Nobody there has seen her. We better take a ride out there. Let's go. Wrong time of the year for a storm. No little downpour is going to dampen my spirit. We got cause to celebrate. Well, now, might be some money in here. Medicine bottles. Well, we might be able to sell those someplace. What about the rest of the stuff? Don't waste nothing, do you, buddy? Huh? Look at that. How about that, huh? Huh? <laughs> Maybe you'll find a buyer for those, too, huh? Look at that. <laughs> Whoo, boy. Never mind those Samuels. The liquor is what we're after. The wagon came this way, all right. We should storm it, break it, and jump with it. No. No, the rain would wash the tracks away. We might never find that wagon again. Let's go. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Where are the horses? In those trees, I think. That's the only place they could have tethered them. I have an idea. It's tricky, and we'll only get one chance at it. But I think it's worth it. Come on. Get the saddle. You get the harness back of the wagon. Get 
You better get back to camp and keep an eye on that wagon. Ain't nobody gonna bother that wagon. We gotta get them horses back. Would you shut up and you get back there? It's gonna take a while to get them horses. I don't want that wagon standing alone. Look, go on and get back here. Come on, Cajun. wonderful thing to have, but it can blind you, too. I have no pride. Pride, no family, no money, none of the things we spoke of. I only wish I had. I only wish I was a real gentleman. Most I've ever been is a gentleman's gentleman, a valet, Mrs. Barclay, someone's servant. Oh, of course, the education was excellent, but... Uh, I was always someone else's man. Thought perhaps I, I might be able to stand on my own here in this country, but seems I've been outlandish failure. Well, it doesn't have to be that way. Well, I've not been very successful in changing it so far, have I? Yes, I'll have to admit to that. But you could change by getting rid of this liquor. I'll be glad to oblige Mrs. Barclay, but you're asking too much. Mr. Hewitt. Mrs. Barclay, we've been through this. Don't see in me what doesn't exist. You came back for me, and that took courage. And a larger measure of cowardice. I didn't think I could make it without you. I'm... I'm sorry. So am I, Mr. Hewitt. How much further is it? Oh, two miles or so. That'd be the longest two miles ever traveled.
Mrs. Barclay, it won't taint you. It's the purest spring water I've ever tasted. Water? Nothing but water. Why? Well, that outlaw said that they had stolen other shipments. Yes, but if they'd stolen this one, they'd have got nothing but water. You know, Mrs. Barclay, I have an idea I've been taken for a fool. I was forced into accepting this job. I was made to take a specific route, probably one the outlaws knew already. So that the other cargo could go safely through on another route. Duped. No worse than that, I think I can safely say I'm the complete pigeon. There is one thing. A cargo of water isn't illegal. No, but it isn't worth anything either. You know, I have a feeling I wasn't supposed to survive this trip. And if I'd gone back for the money, I probably wouldn't have survived that either. Not only am I a fool, but I'm a profitless fool into the bargain. I'll take you to the Indian village, if you like. Oh, I'd like that very much, Mr. Hewitt. There is one thing, however. If you don't mind, I'll drive. I don't mind at all. <laughs> the devil have you been? To the Indian village. And you'll be happy to know that the quarantine is almost lifted. Everything is fine now. What happened? We found your rig on the trail back there. Well, it's a long story. Oh, by the way, this is Mr. Hewitt. My sons, Jared and Heath. Gentlemen. I've invited Mr. Hewitt to be our guest at the ranch, and he's accepted. Provided he can cook dinner for us. Cook dinner? Oh, he's a genius at gourmet cooking. In fact... There may even be a future in it for him. You mentioned a long story. Yeah, but first, gentlemen, there's one thing I think I ought to tell you about your mother which you may not know. She's a totally remarkable and absolutely magnificent woman. Uh, we knew that a long time ago. Well, I didn't. Not until recently. I shall do my best to prove myself worthy of your friendship. Well, you already have that, Mr. Hewitt. Ah, in that case, I shall go to work to win... Win? ...your regard, dear lady.